Hi everyone, this is Arohi from Pyfit Technologies and in my today's video, I'll talk about Spurt Vector Machine Algorithm with practical example. So let's start. So first of all, I have imported all the required modules and the data set on which I work upon is this is the data set. So this is how this data looks like. We have these columns, user ID, gender, age, estimated salary and purchased means on the basis of gender, age and estimated salary, we want to know, we want to classify whether person will purchase a product or not, right? Zero means person will not purchase a product and one means person will purchase a product. So we have two different kind of classes in purchase, zero and one. Zero means not purchased and one means purchased, right? So on the basis of gender, age and estimated salary, we want to perform this application. So let's see, let's uh, see some features about data set first of all. So I have checked the shape of data set over here. So we have 400 rows means we have 400 different records and five columns in this data set. Now let's divide our data set into X and Y. X means independent variable and Y means dependent variable. What is Y? What Y simply means what we want to classify or what we want to predict. And X means on the basis of which we want to predict Y. So X is independent and the Y of value of Y is dependent on X, right? So after, see in X, what all columns I'm using? I'm using second and third column. Second means age and third column is estimated salary. I'm not using user ID and gender. On the basis of age and estimated salary, I want to see whether person will purchase a product or not, right? So that's why in X, I have two columns and in Y, I have column number fourth, which is purchased. So let's print X and Y values separately. So you can see when I print this X value, we have age and estimated salary as a data in X and in Y, we have class labels. Right. So now the next task is to divide your data into train and test. So I'm dividing my data into train and test and test split is 25% means remaining uh, data will be used as training data and 25% of data will be used as test data. So after dividing my data into train and test, I'm checking the shape of train, X train and um, X test. So we have 300 records in uh, X train and we have 100 records in uh, two columns in test data means on the basis of 300 records we want to train our algorithm and and after training we will test our algorithm on these 100 records right so in next line in this cell I'm performing I'm doing some scaling on the data by using standard scalar you can even use min max scalar but over here I'm using standard scalar to scale the data right so after scaling, now the task is to apply support vector machine algorithm for classification. So first of all, uh, let's understand how SVM classify, right? How SVM perform classification. So basically the job of SVM is to perform classification by finding the right hyperplane that classify the data points in a best image. Let's uh, see this image. Suppose we have this data set, orange smileys and yellow smileys. These are the two different classes, right? And we have data set looks like this. Now we want to perform classification on this data. And as I've told you, SVM perform classification by, uh, you know, by finding a right hyperplane. So what is that hyperplane? Let's understand this. See on the data, I have three hyperplanes. One is blue hyperplane, one is green hyperplane and other one is black hyperplane. So this blue hyperplane, let's talk about this hyperplane first of all. So if you'll see this hyperplane, so what we can say, see over here that this data point is very close to this blue hyperplane, means the gap between this data point and line is very small. On the other hand, if we say orange smiley is over here, this orange smiley is also very close to this blue data point means classification is being done properly but the thing is distance the gap between the closest data point and the line and the gap between here also the gap between orange smiley and this blue line is very small right 
and how we choose right hyperplane over here we have three hyperplanes right so if i talk about this black hyperplane so this black hyperplane uh, will not be acceptable over here because this is performing uh, misclassification we are not even the data is not getting classified properly so we will not choose this black hyperplane now the thing is how to choose like between this blue and green hyperplane which one is the best hyperplane how to choose that so we simply choose the line we simply choose the hyperplane with the maximum distance from the closest support vector see support vector this data point the closest data points are also called support vectors you can say it closest data point also and you can say it um, uh, support vector also so how we'll choose the right hyperplane by the we'll see that the maximum the line which have maximum distance from the closest support vector so out of these three lines out of these three hyperplanes we can see that the green hyperplane has maximum distance from the nearest support vector maximum distance so which yellow smiley data point is closest to this green vector uh, green line this one so this is the closest support vector to this green hyperplane and this orange data point this orange support vector is closest to this green hyperplane now what we are checking over here is the hyperplane which has maximum distance from the nearest support vector so out of these three line green line is the line which has maximum distance from the closest support vector so we'll be choosing green hyperplane as the right hyperplane so this is how svm work now let me show you with the coding how to execute this whole thing so in svm so first of all we are importing uh, svm right and then in one variable i'm um, using a variable name classifier variable can be anything you can use any other name so classifier is a variable in this variable i'm calling this svc support vector um, svc module um, sorry algorithm and the kernel i'm using over here is linear see in svm in support vector machine we have a various different kernels right so svm is famous for its kernel trick only so we have various kernels like linear kernel rbf kernel polynomial kernel and sigmoid kernel right so i'll be using two three kernels over here just to show you how different kernels will give you different results the very first kernel is linear kernel so i'm uh, kernel i'm using is linear kernel and then i'm training my algorithm so we all know like by using this fit method we can train our algorithm by giving it x train and y train data right and then we perform prediction and we perform prediction on x test so how many records for uh, how many records we have for test data 100 records so that means over here we'll be getting 100 different y values for 100 different x values right now let's check the accuracy for svm algorithm when kernel is linear kernel so the accuracy is 90% so how we check the accuracy see we simply check the difference between the actual y value our actual y value is present in y test and y underscore predict is the our predicted y value we check the difference between actual value of y and the predicted value of y and what we are getting over here is we are getting our, that our algorithm is 90% correct when we are using linear kernel now let's change the kernel and see the accuracy again so over here again i'm using the svm algorithm only but this time i'm using kernel rbf radial basis function i'm using this kernel so again fit the data for training your algorithm and then use predict to get the prediction value and then check the accuracy this time we are getting accuracy 93% so you can see here that when we have used the linear kernel at that time we were getting 90% accuracy but with rbf kernel we were getting 93% accuracy so now there are other terms see in rbf when i talk about rbf so rbf have some other features also like 
we can give the value of gamma we can give the value of c a term right so again over here i'm using kernel rbf but this time i'm giving other values also i'm giving value of gamma and i'm giving value of c right so when i'm giving value of gamma is 15 and the value of c is 7 at that time i was getting accuracy 89 percent c over here by using rbf kernel we were getting 93 percent accuracy but with the value of gamma as 15 and the value of c as 7 when we use these two values our accuracy decreased to 89 percent so let me tell you what is this gamma and c first of all so see gamma simply means you can see this picture gamma simply means if you will give low value of gamma means if you will give low value of gamma means let's suppose if you are giving one or two or three uh, value of gamma you assign here three or two or one so if you are giving low value of gamma that simply means for choosing this right hyperplane we want to calculate the gap between every data point with this line right means we'll check what is the uh, how much gap is there between this data point and this line how much gap is there for this data point and this line means for each and every data point we'll check the gap between line and the data point if you are giving low value of gamma and if you are giving high value of gamma that simply means we want to check the gap between the closest data points with this line so over here you can see i'm checking um, gap between only this with this point and with this point and on this side also i'm checking gap between this data point and this data point with this line i'm not calling i'm not doing it with all the data points why because over here we have chosen high value of gamma so that simply means over here the value of gamma is high even <coughs> sorry what you can do you can increase or decrease the value of gamma and then you can check the accuracy your accuracy will fluctuate there right in the same way we have this c over here the value of c is 7 now let me tell you how to choose the value of c so basically c is a regularization term now what is regularization first of all so regularization means adding some value in the error function to improve the results so what we are doing over here we are adding some value right in the error function to improve the results now in simple words we can simply say that we are using this c term to tell our svm algorithm how much misclassification to avoid so if you see this picture this these two this image and this image these two images are related to this c term so what if what we are doing in this uh, figure so if you are choosing low value of uh, uh, c means if you are choosing c equals to one or two if you are choosing low value of c then what will happen see uh, over here you will see that when we when i have chosen the low value of c so we are having some misclassification error so this orange data point should be on this side but it is classified as on this side why does it happen because we have low value of c so in this side we have higher value of c higher value of c means you will get more accurate results you you can see over here the classification is accurate over here so that simply means you can choose there is no any strict rule that like uh, what should be the value of gamma and what should be the value of c you can choose it yourself you should only know that what will happen if you choose low value of gamma and what will happen if you choose high value of gamma and what will happen when you choose low or high value of c so that I have already explained you low value means consider all points for this line choosing this line high gamma means we want to choose only the closest point to uh, find out this finally hyperplane the good hyperplane and low value of c means there will be some accuracy uh, you know this classification error and will high value of uh, c you will get more accurate uh, classification so this is what i've done here till now now the next thing is now let's use polynomial kernel 
see now i'm using svm algorithm again but this time i'm kernel i'm using is polynomial kernel and the degree i'm giving is 4 so if you remember about polynomial regression algorithm in polynomial regression we give different degrees to our algorithm right we give different degrees we assign different degrees to our data set so um, to get more uh, good results because a polynomial regression is used to handle non linear data right the same way the task which polynomial regression algorithm does same task can be performed by using kernel poly of svc and this degree we have to give by ourselves only so over here i'm choosing degree 4 and i'm training my algorithm and then i'm testing the algorithm and checking accuracy you can see that the accuracy again we are getting here is 93% see with rbf kernel and with this polynomial kernel we are getting accuracy 93% but when i have used linear kernel on it you will see over here when we have used this linear kernel at that time i was only getting accuracy of 90% so what we can understand from these results that the data the data set on which we are working upon that data set is not a linear data so that's why we are not getting good accuracy as compared to non linear linear you know kernels so the data set which we are using is non linear data so that's why we are getting better accuracy with rbf and polynomial kernel because rbf and polynomial kernels are used to uh, perform classification on non linear data so if you want to see the data set let me show you the data set in the form of this so this is the training data so over here you can see these purple points belongs to class 0 and these yellow points belongs to class 1 so this data is not linear how we can say that this data is not linear because by just putting a straight line we cannot classify the data properly some of the points of this class are on this side means the data is non linear data in the same way i'm plotting test data over here in test data also you can see this data is not linear because by simply putting a line we cannot classify our data so this data is non linear data so now let's draw a hyperplane the topic which we have just discussed the right hyperplane how svm classify the data by putting a right hyperplane let me show you how to uh, draw that hyperplane so that is what i'm doing over here so this is the data this is the data these data points belongs to zero class and these data points yellow data points belongs to um one class and this is our hyperplane right hyperplane which is classifying our data and this is how i have drawn this is um, this hyperplane so i'm using linear kernel fit the data and then predict and then i'm uh, you know doing a scatter plot and these are the three four lines which are responsible to create this hyperplane and over here we are plotting this hyperplane so what we can see over here that obviously we are not getting 100% accuracy because this data point is on this side right and there is some misclassification so that's why we were getting output of this svm linear kernel is um, 93% right so this this is how svm works all the observations of class 0 all the observations of class 0 are purple and the observations of class 1 are yellow the hyperplane is the decision boundary for deciding how new observations are classified any observation above the line any new observation which will be above the line will be classified as class 1 and any observation blue below the line will be classified as class 0 so this is how svm perform classification thank you